Dr. Pompa, welcome to the show. Yeah, I'm excited to be here for this. This is my favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to talk with you about this because not only is it personal to me, but it's also something that a lot of people are dealing with. Um, how did you develop your level of expertise in detoxification and toxic overload in the body? Yeah, I mean, it's, it was a pain to purpose experience. I, I didn't go, okay, I'm, this is what I'm going to do for a living. You know, <laughs> it, uh, I was functioning along as an amazing uh, with amazing practice, amazing family, two young kids, and you know, life was good. So I had an amazing life, and then fatigue hit, and it really came out of nowhere, honestly. And I, I was doing a lot of cycling at the time and um, racing my bike at the expert level, and I thought, I'm just overtraining. So I, I did what most good athletes would do, I cut back. But it was getting worse, not better. And then it started into headaches uh, out of nowhere, which I never got. Then it became, I was allergic to every food I ate. At least I thought I was. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, then it was insomnia, panic attacks, I, debilitating anxiety. Uh, I became, my adrenals were shot, right? And I was trying to address those, thinking that was the problem. But it was, as it turned out, it was way too far downstream for where the real problem was, which we'll, we'll get to. Um, but my thyroid too. I, I had all the thy typical thyroid symptoms, but my blood work was normal. But um, I literally was chasing all of that, trying to figure out what was wrong. And, and honestly, I was getting worse, not better. I, mean, I took time off the bike, and that didn't work. The adrenal thyroid stuff, that didn't work. Um, and it was years later that I found on the internet, actually, you know how you, you're always digging, you know? <laughs> and I found Mad Hatter's disease, which was people who were poisoned by mercury. They were making felt hats using mercury as a part of the process. So I went and got a blood test, and unfortunately, it was negative. It was a year or so later, and I was knowing my thyroid and my adrenals were not right. And um, I mean, I, I literally, I remember going to movies with my kids and having to leave because I couldn't even handle the loud the excitement. I couldn't handle it. My adrenals were that fried. But he said, you know, Dan, I think you have mercury toxicity. And I said, you know, I, I thought so too. How old and I did at this point. A, yeah, I mean, I, I did a blood test and it was normal. He said, wrong test. That would be if you had acute mercury poisoning, like you were making felt hats with mercury and <laughs> being exposed every day, then your blood would be off. But the fact was, is I think you have chronic expo you know, exposure or poisoning, if you will. Um, so do a challenge test where you take something like DMSA that we were talking about earlier that brings it out of the tissue and then we can look at what you have. And sure enough, I saw the mercury then for the first time. And, uh, you know, and uh, of course I asked the obvious question, where do you think I got it? And he said, did you have any dental work done around the time this happened? And I said, you know, I may have because I got two silver fillings removed, which contained 50% mercury. Yeah. So, and it was days after that, I just never put it together. And, and again, I, I it, my bucket was filling. I had those fillings in from the time I was a kid. My mother had them in, which um, there's a study called the Drash study, um, one of many, by the way. The number of fillings, ladies, in your mouth is proportional to how much we find in the baby's brain. And that's on autopsies, uh, the babies that die in utero. But so that mercury is transitioning in utero, as well as lead, uh, because when ladies, when you're pregnant, it's normal to get rid of bone, or you basically utilize bone. But out comes lead, because most of it's stored in the bone. So we get our first heavy metal exposure in utero, and then, of course, exposures in life. And by the way, I wore contacts in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, and there was mercury in the form of thimerosal in the saline solution in contacts, which was going right into my brain. So I had many exposures, uh, like many people today. So that's how I ended up uh, doing everything I teach today. So I teach doctors the protocols that you all are going to have an opportunity to learn. Um, but, uh, everything I teach came out of that, of me getting my life back and, and ultimately getting the mercury out of my brain. And that's really the problem, by the way. Wow. We, all right. A couple things to unpack. One, the, the, the spelling on that study where they found a correlation between the number of fillings. Yes. D-R-A-S-H, drash. D-R-A-S-H. All right. And we'll link, we'll link to that in the show notes. And, and then it might be S it might be C H actually, Drash. Yeah, the way they pronounce it. I think it's a German study. Beautiful. And um is that the same or a different study? But I had heard something similar where testing 
children, babies, unborn fetuses for environmental toxins, they were finding upwards of 200 heavy metals, pollutants, pesticides, fluoride, all the stuff that you would expect to take that someone, you, would, you wouldn't even think someone was exposed to that much in a lifetime, and they're finding it in children before they're even born. Yeah, they were finding it in uh, the cord blood, et cetera. That was the environmental working group. Um, you know, there's another study, too, that showed, I mean, this was, uh, uh, it was published in um, FACIB, which is one of the most prestigious scientific journals, but it showed the number of fillings in our mouth is proportional to how much we have in our brain. You know, when I was sick, I, um, uh, you know, I knew it, there was a problem upstream from my thyroid and adrenals, and I, I realized this was, it was a pituitary. Your pituitary hypothalamus, it's kind of the control tower. It sits in your brain. And it regulates your thyroid hormone. It regulates your adrenals. And this is, there's a, an axis, they call it, that kind of regulates our stress, our anxiety, our, how we feel normal, our cortisol. You know, really create, you know, if it's working great, you don't have anxiety and you sleep great. If it's not, you have all those symptoms that I had all of them. And so knowing that I was downstream trying to fix my adrenals and thyroid, it just wasn't working. So I, I knew that the problem was in this pituitary hypothalamus. I just didn't know what was wrong. And when I would try to address even that, I, I got worse. I, you know, I definitely didn't get better. And it wasn't until I started reading some of these studies that it shows that that's where the mercury accumulates the most is in this pituitary hypothalamus that regulates our hormones. So I knew that once I realized this was a mercury issue, I had to get it out of the brain, that portion of the brain. And that's like so many people today that have unexplainable fatigue, you know, brain fog, hormone dysfunction, even weight loss resistance. Uh, it's, it's really the issue of what's going on in the pituitary hypothalamus. Neurotoxins have an affinity for that area of the brain. So my true cellular detox, which we're going to discuss, there's a preparatory phase that we do to prepare. There's a body phase and there's the most important phase and that's the brain phase. And, and that's how I got my life back. And, and really now, cause I train doctors around the country, thousands uh, of others. So we'll, we'll get to the phases and all that, but you know, I threw you off your course. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm loving it. And, uh, very interesting stuff, especially because my dad has, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2015. A lot of our listeners are, are aware of that. And we had his mercury taken out earlier this year, but as I'm sure we're going to discuss the, the detoxification process and making sure we now get it out of his, his body since the source has been taken out. Um, you know, That's a and, and huge uh, distinction because many people watching this show, if you have these silver fillings, uh, please uh, you know, don't just run and take them out. There's a proper dentist to go to and there's a proper procedure that we talk, talked about the prep phase ahead of time. Very important. And maybe there's people watching this who have got them out years ago. The problem is this, to your point, is that the mercury is vapor mercury that comes off of those fillings. The life of the filling, and y'all can go to um, smoking tooth. If you put that in Google, watch the video. That's a 25 year old silver filling and you watch mercury vapor pouring off of that filling. And the reason 25 years is important is because you'll go, people will go to their dentist. They'll say, oh, your fillings are old anyway. All the mercury's off of it. It's not true it'll vaporize mercury, the life of your filling, uh, the life of the filling, and that's going in your brain. And that's what that video shows. But the problem is the vapor goes into the brain and then it turns to inorganic mercury. And there it's locked, the half-life is so long, there it's locked for life. So you're right, the fillings have to come out properly, but then you have to do the correct brain detox to get that uh, mercury out of the brain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're, in just a second, we're going to get into the, the preparation phase, the body phase, and the brain phase. Taking a step back to kind of meet people where a lot of the general consciousness is around detoxification and the toxins that are the, the major problems, where do you think public awareness is? with this stuff. I mean, there's such popularity with juice fasts and, you know, yeah. the colon blow kits and things yeah. like that. Are I people running the what? <laughs> Poopers. Poopers. Yeah. Like, are, is there merit to those? Where do they fit in? What are the real issues that, that we need to be aware of and, and the most pernicious toxins in our environment? 
Well, yeah, there's a lot here. So let, let's unwrap it from- uh, I stacked you know, a few think, questions on you, Dr. Dr. Pompa. I know, yeah, you're, you're killing me here because I just <laughs> want to stand on all of them. Uh, no, look, I, I think um, detox is in vogue right now because there's more people uh, and there's more marketing out there. The reason you can't lose weight, it's detox, a toxic issue, which they're right. You know, so they use these, you know, studies and, and, you know, more modern science to realize that most hormone problems are toxic issues. And the reason why you don't feel well and despite changing your diet, exercising is it's a toxic issue. And they're right. But where they're wrong and going wrong is it's the next 10 day cleanse, the liver cleanse. It's the, uh, again, if you go to Whole Foods years ago, there was probably two detox products. Now there's sections. You know, and, and again, in every practitioner office, it's the 10 day cleanse. But the problem is, is they're weak binders at best. And it, you know, in that mostly they are, in fact, poopers, meaning they make you go to the bathroom, which may not be a bad thing, right? But as far as why you don't feel well still, why you can't lose weight, why you have brain fog, that's an upstream issue. That's a cellular issue. So real detox has to be at the cell, it does. And if, if you're not fixing what the cell should be doing naturally every day, getting rid of toxins, then you're not going to get well. You're not going to feel well, right? And you're definitely not going to uh, hit your fitness goal or whatever goal you have, because you know, maybe your goal is just to be the healthiest and the best you can be. But you have to go to the cell to get well. And therefore, real detox is a cellular issue. It makes sense. And last introductory preparatory question. We're exposed to so much. We were just talking about babies in, in the womb still, you know, testing for over 200 environmental chemicals. Um, and by the way, Andrew, I, I don't want to, th- again, go back to what you were saying, but that, the, according to studies, that's four generations that it affects, meaning that, that that mercury or lead, whatever, which one it is, and both today are very prominent because our parents grew up in the lead generation. Um, it's inherited four generations physically, meaning birth to birth to birth, and epigenetically, meaning it turns on a gene that's estimated four generations. We're talking four generations of toxicity from the womb, not to mention the things that we're unknowingly exposed to every day. So go ahead and finish your point. <laughs> that's, that's pretty wild. I was unaware that epigenetics, epigenetic expression transcended generations. Yes. That's, that's interesting. And, and by the way, folks, that means the gene is turned on. And then the next generation, it's still turned on. So maybe it's that thyroid condition, you know, even obesity. There was a Duke University, there was a study. They gave two uh, groups of mice, identical twins, same DNA. They fed them the same, environments were the same. And they exposed one group to a toxin, like we're talking about. And it triggered a gene called the agouti gene, which is an obesity gene. It affected heart disease, thyroid, et cetera. Their hair became yellow, more brittle. You know, sounds very familiar to conditions we see today. And that gene was turned on in the next generation. They didn't even expose them to the toxin. The gene was triggered in the next generations. And so the study went, um, a lot of the stuff that in the True Cell Detox program that we utilize around the cell, um, they use to turn off the gene, to break that pattern of that epigenetic uh, transfer. So yeah, I mean, we're, we're turning on genes, plus we're giving the physical chemical inheritance. So toxicity starts in utero. Wow. So we have this massive amount of exposure. Our bodies are already overburdened. And some of our detox pathways can be rate limiting factors in being able right. to detox. What are the symptoms that someone should look for that would indicate that they may have an overburdened, that they may be dealing with toxic overload. And what should they start doing like this second to prepare for, you know, the phases that you lead people through? Right. You know, that we're, that we're going to be doing in, in, on February 18th. Yeah. I mean, um, so two parts there. The, your digestion uh, is a good indicator. Um, the, your liver is a big detox organ. And a lot of folks don't realize that poor digestion has a lot to do with your liver. And um, when that is being, um, you know, really uh, under the toxic burden and not getting rid of uh, toxins correctly and transforming them into something that's able to get rid of, uh, digestion starts. And then, of course, toxins interfere with the microbiome. 
and you're trying to take all these different bacteria, wondering why you're still food intolerant, have food allergies, uh, look upstream. There's most likely a toxic source. You know, and, and that, I think that's a really good analogy too, Anthony, because if you think of um, being downstream, I've said that word a few times, uh, you know, when you look at your gut uh, or your liver and people are trying to fix those things, um, it's most likely you're too far downstream if you're not getting well. So uh, if you think about like a factory being 20 miles upstream, dumping mercury in or lead into the water, you're downstream trying to, you know, the fish are dying and you put new fish in. They die, you put new fish in. That's you taking all your probiotics, right? And doing all the wonderful things you're trying to do for your gut, any fermented foods, but you still can't fix your digestion. Look 20 miles upstream. There may be something dumping in and that's analogous you know, an analogy to your cells that are toxic, your tissues, your brain that's toxic, you know, constantly, you know, affecting um, the downstream pathways. Or you may have silver filling still in your mouth. That's the 20 mile upstream factory. Or you live in a moldy home. Or you have a hidden infection from what is called a cavitation or a root canal in your jaw that's constantly poisoning that. So you have to look upstream to the causative factors if you're going to repopulate the gut, <laughs> you know, so, but yeah, I mean, those are some of the symptoms, of course, just, you know, general fatigue, brain fog, as I already mentioned, hormone dysregulation, the inability to lose weight, all of those are signs of neurotoxicity upstream. And there was and a second part to the question. The second part was, what's the first, what's the first step to start opening up the detox right. pathways? You have to change your diet. And I, I always like to say this, if you're suffering from an ail ailment of some sort, the perfect diet, most likely, if you're neurotoxic, won't get you well. Um, if you're neurotoxic, it won't get you well. But you won't get well without a perfect diet. You know, and, and, and again, we're, we're going to be taking a, a group of people, including yourself, through the 90-day detox, right? The True Cellular Detox, and we're going to open that up uh, today. You can tell them how to do that. Um, I'm sure you're going to provide a link. And we will be, there it is. So that's the brain thing. I got so, the whole kit right here. Yeah. So month one, <laughs> we prepare them. It's preparatory. Month two is the body phase and month three is the brain phase. We'll talk more in detail there. But we're inviting all of you folks watching this to join us in, in this 90-day process. But in that, we'll have time to chisel apart the what, what I'm going to call is the perfect diet because it's different for everybody, okay? Um, you know, and I, I talk about diet variation and why it's important to change our diet weekly, monthly, and even seasonally, and how that is actually a way to optimize hormones, which I call hormone optimization. My feast famine cycles we'll talk about. I'm very known, not just for my cellular detox, but for fasting. Fasting is a critical component of hormone regulation and taking advantage of a new word called autophagy. You'll, we'll teach you what that means but it helps you produce your own natural stem cells that help heal. So we're gonna, we're gonna teach you all those things, but the diet is a good place to start. So start with what you know, and I'm sure Anthony, you've been teaching these folks about diet and, and healthy living and biohacking them there, but we're, we're going to biohack that to a much greater level with fasting, my feast famine cycles, my diet variation principles uh, during the program. But again, start with just trying to do this. You know, take refined sugar and processed foods out of your diet for now until you learn more. <laughs> How's that? Yeah, I, I love what you said about the perfect diet. It may not be enough to get you well, but you're not going to get well without the perfect diet. Mm -hmm. and, and it's it's true. I mean, I went through so many ups and downs in my experience and have seen it time and time again, even with something as simple as weight loss, where if someone's having an immunogenic or allergenic reaction to a food that, you know, if some food's causing them inflammation, you know, even if that's like their binge on Friday night, because, you know, they've been good all week and they want to have one crazy night, it seems to last and prevent progress in so many areas. And you're saying, You've got to be clean with the food if you want your body to be able to get rid of the toxins first. Well, and you know, it, it, there's a, uh, the senior scientist at MIT, um, Stephanie Seneff, who I, I've had the privilege of um, uh, interviewing a couple times. It was 2012 was her first study done on this, but she showed, showed that a chemical called glyphosate, um, which is being sprayed on you know, most of our food supply today, and we weren't exposed to it as kids. Well, at least I wasn't. I'm in my 50s, you know. <laughs> so there's some people watching. I'm I've sure. got decades of glyphosate in me. 
it's delicious. You know, young viewers, maybe. But <laughs> um, anyways, but this chemical, um, it I, we talked about how we're exposed to mercury and lead in utero, and then then beyond. Um, but she showed that this chemical is opening up our gut barrier and our blood brain barrier and allowing these already exposed heavy metals to cross deeper into our brain. She mm -hmm. believes it's driving the epidemic of Alzheimer's, dementia, and autism, which by the way, if statistics stay the same, by 2032, one in two kids are gonna be on the autism spectrum, that's scary. And not to mention when you look at dementia and Alzheimer's, skyrocketing to one in three. So, you know, those are scary numbers and her explanation is, we already hold a lot of these heavy metals and then this chemical that's on all of our food is being sprayed and it's allowing these already exposed toxins to cross into our brain. She believes that's a causative factor. So eating all organic, I, I, you know, it's, I know it's more expensive, but I'm telling you it's worth it because it's causing toxins to go deeper, not to mention how toxic that is for your gut microbiome in causing leaky gut. So there's a good place to start. Absolutely. And just to piggyback on what you said about compromising the gut barrier and the blood brain barrier, even like the testicular barrier, th those same things are now being found to happen from microwave radiation, cell phones, cell yeah, towers. That, uh, you know what? We'll waters. talk more about that. And, you yeah. know, I, I think we have three or four times with them, um, uh, you know, where we're going. I think it's, you know, we're doing one here, maybe three other times where we're going to be teaching them uh, this cellular detox, as well as, by, by the way, when you all get the 90 day program, you have access to my whole educational portal, which walks you through cellular detox each step. And I talk about these things, right, I, uh, that we're discussing, but it talks about the, um, it, it, the whole goal is to educate you through the process, but you have that whole portal of education. Plus once a month, you're going to have Anthony and I uh, taking you through and talking about these things and expanding upon them. So that's exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm real excited about it. So for those of you guys that are listening, basically on, on February 18th, we're going to be doing this true cellular detox challenge. That's what Dr. Pompa and I've been referencing here and there. And all that information will be at uh, tcdbiohack.com. So tcdbiohack.com. Just wanted to put that out there because your, your interest may already be peaked and, and I'm pretty pumped for it, what we're going to be doing. So Dr. Pompa, let's take us through some of the phases that you found to be most effective in getting, in dealing with what is a, a, essentially a genetic environmental mismatch and these massive toxicities that are driving so many states of compromised health. What's the process? Yeah, so I mean, in this program, the first month is about prepar uh, preparation and we prepare the cell. I, I, I briefly mentioned that the cell is where real detox has to occur, but when we're exposed to so many of these big hitter toxins, um, what it does is it compromises the detox pathways of the cell. And I, I teach, and you'll, you'll get this more in the portal, but I teach my five R's of cellular detox. And, and, and that's basically what we need to upregulate these pathways in the cell. And the five R's is a roadmap on how we do that. So the month one, we want to start upregulating the cell to do what it's designed to do, and that's get rid of toxins. You, you, you have to understand that when you make energy in your cell, and that's where all of our energy comes from, and it's called ATP, and I don't wanna bring people back to biology, but <laughs> when you go through that process, you make a lot of waste that the cell has to get rid of. And if it doesn't, it starts to build up in the cell. So a great analogy is this, if you burn logs in your fireplace, if that damper's not open, you're gonna die, right? Your home fills with smoke. That's the cell. That cell has to get rid of that smoke, if you will. So toxins that we're exposed to come in. They surround the cell. They're attracted to this fatty membrane because toxins are attracted to fat. But what it does is it inflames that membrane. Now you can't get good stuff in the cell, so it doesn't matter how good you eat. And you can't get the toxins that even the cell creates out. So the cell becomes like your house, filled with smoke, if you will. So the first step is to improve the function of these pathways. Fixing the cell membrane that's inflamed, critical. So we wanna start fixing that so we can start to create normal detox. And then uh, in this preparatory phase, you already brought it up how important the downstream detox pathways are. We want to help the liver, the kidneys, and the gut. So when we do start detox, we've opened up the, the drainage. 
So all that is part of this preparatory phase uh, in month one. So are we looking at nutritional cofactors like N-acetylcysteine and things to, to assist the liver? Is it, is it fasting? Um, what have you found people need to address in this preparatory phase to be able to even be able to handle uh, a body and brain detox and start. Yeah. Doing so it. again, before we even push any detox, so a product called G cell um, that raises intra meaning in the cell glutathione, intracellular glutathione. That's one of the pathways that the body uses to move toxins out. We don't even bring that in. And N acetylcysteine is in that product. However, yeah, I've taken thing, that Warren gave it to me. It's awesome. Yeah. So it is a really awesome product. But a lot of people just take N-acetylcysteine to raise glutathione, but it's only one step in a multi-step process that raises intracellular glutathione. We wait till the body phase to bring that in. And then, but in the, in the preparatory phase, we're working more on fixing the cell membrane, upregulating cell energy, downregulating the oxidative stress. And then there's a, a pathway called methylation. Methylation helps you get rid of toxins. Methylation turns off bad genes. You know, methylation has all these protective effects on your DNA. So we raise up methylation before we raise up glutathione. See, I mean, this is, um, I've been teaching this stuff for 20 years, but you know, it's a thought through process of what we do first, second, third. So that's why the program takes you through that prep phase, body phase, and brain phase for that very reason. You, you brought up something very important. Like a, a good amount of people listening may be familiar with MTHFR, which is like, it's this gene variation where you don't detox as well and you need more cer of certain bioactive B vitamins and stuff. And like 30 or 50, 30 to 50 percent of the population has it. My question for you is when you see people who are struggling with toxic overload, how much higher, if it's higher, I may be making an assumption, but how much higher is that percentage of MTHFR prevalence or gene SNPs that are associated with like glutathione production? I would have to imagine that it's much, much higher in that population of people that are dealing with you toxins. Know, I mean, the truth is, you know, years ago when we started studying the SNPs, and I know it's very in vogue right now, we thought it was going to be this impressive thing. Um, what we've learned, and again, I've interviewed a lot of scientists who just focus on this, so they know more than I. But what we've learned is more of it's epigenetic than we think. It's, meaning you can have certain genes, but it's what's triggered. And these SNPs, as we refer to them as, we're realizing there's many ways around them. So I don't ever really treat genes, you know, we, we want to look at people, not their genes, you know, especially when we're trying to help them. With that said, uh, there is some truth to the fact that it's susceptibilities, right? But I, I hate people identifying themselves into these genetic pathways. I'm, I'm MTHFR. <laughs> me too. I'm homozygous, right? My wife oh, yeah, is okay. <laughs> Yeah. My, my We're wife doing is, it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My <laughs> wife is not, and she had more methylations than I did. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason why, she was just loaded with lead. So it, here, let, let, let's, stories can help teach people, and this is a really important one. So... Uh, my, my wife's mother had, had breast cancer. She treated it regular. She was considered uh, a cure and a success because she lived over five years. I, I told her, Joyce, if you don't get to the upstream cause, uh, you're going to end up with another cancer. Well, my doctor said, blah, blah, blah. Everyone knows the story. Ten years later, I mean, literally ten years later, because that's the statistics, you end up with another cancer. She did, uterine cancer. Her doctors, of course, told her it had nothing to do with her breast cancer. And two years later, she died of that one. My wife was literally going down that same road. And we did a hormone test, 24-hour urine, and her methylation was tanked. And that's a bad thing because you use these methyl groups to get rid of toxic estrogen, which causes breast cancer. And so- Is that the, doc the doctor's data? Uh, that one's Genova Labs. Genova uh, Labs. Okay, yeah. we'll we'll link to these just so and that or, people can... There's one called a Dutch test, but they're both 24-hour urine collections, and that's the best way to really look at your hormones. It's the best way to look at these estrogen metabolites that build up. And a lot of women taking bioidentical hormones, they feel better, but they feel better developing cancer because these estrogen metabolites are higher, and they don't know it's symptom-wise, so it can be a lifesaver. But my wife's toxic estrogen was very elevated and her methylation was tanked. So for a while we were trying to support her methylation. Uh, it wasn't working. 
Well, her lead, as we found out, like her mother's, was off the chart. Where did she get it? Obviously, her mother uh, was her first load. But um, once we got her lead down to a certain point, now her methylation started improving. See, whether it's emotional or chemical toxicity, it depletes the methylation. So we were unable, we were not successful to get her methylation up, even though she does no bad genes for it, SNPs for it, until we got the toxic load down. And then her methylation came up and then her body started claiming the toxic estrogen. So anyways, again, you know, it, during the, the TCD program here, we'll uh, expand upon all that. But um, that's the importance of going upstream. Why are your hormones dysregulated? Why is your methylation uh, bad? It's more than just genes. It has more to do with exposures and stressors than does your genetics to prove the point I was trying to make earlier. Makes sense. So this this first phase, we're sort of reestablishing healthy cell cellular membranes, the lipid bilayer, making sure toxins are exiting, nutrients are getting in. And a lot of people probably think if their digestion is good, they're absorbing nutrients. What you're saying is you got to go even deeper. Where if the if the cell membrane is not intact, you're not even going to absorb what you're eating. That's right. It's it's not what you eat. It's what you assimilate in the gut and at the cell, right? And then in this first phase, we are assisting methylation we want to go into detox you know with methylation support for sure because it's so critical as we just pointed out okay beautiful are we doing any coffee enemas in the <laughs> i'm just kidding. i'm all for it no <laughs> me too you know, i love them <laughs> i'm a biohacker like you at heart right so <laughs> yeah. i i'm uh i love doing coffee enemas um on the on cycle and you're going to learn folks what an on cycle is versus an off cycle and why this pulsing is really important but yeah we're, we're, we're going to share all our little biohacks um, that aren't made necessarily on the portal. So, you know, we're going to share how we do coffee enemas. We'll share all our, and you probably have so many fun biohacks as well. Yep. Yep. And all of you guys that want to get in on this with Dr. Pompa and I, uh, I'll also share some of the, some of the other things I've been doing to prepare and get the most out of the, the TCD challenge. So all of that, we're going to pull back the curtain and share with you guys to make sure you get, you get the most out of this. And like, 90 days starting February 18th, 2019, you're going to be feeling like a completely new person. So um, beautiful. So preparation phase, we've, we've ramped up methylation. We've started opening the detox pathways and now we're going to get into the body and then the brain. Yeah. Yeah. So the body phase, the goal here is to just get the easy to reach toxins in the body. What's in and around the organs, you know, not necessarily in the deep, deep tissues yet. The reason for this is we want to set up what is called concentration gradient. Okay, I'm gonna take you back to your biology or chemistry. You know, remember things move from higher concentration to lower. It's diffusion, right? And, and if you put, if you remember, and I, I re actually remember doing this in, in my class, they put a membrane in a Petri dish, right? Or not a Petri dish, a beaker, there's the word I was looking for. And um, they put, something higher concentration on one side it could be something like food color and not on the other side eventually it equaled out because things move from higher concentration to lower it's just the way it works so we set up this concentration by clearing the body first and then the final step we set up is the brain phase and we do that so things move from the higher concentration because ultimately we have to get to the deeper organs and tissues like the brain. And that sets up that concentration to make that happen. I'm writing down some knowledge bombs you've been, drop, you've been dropping throughout and like the, so many of these myths. So, okay, we're setting up the concentration gradient so that basically as we clear the toxins on the more superficial levels of these tissues, the toxins that are deeper will gradually start to diffuse toward the surface. It won't be as harsh on the body and right. um, we're setting ourselves up to eventually get, them, get these toxins out of more important places. Yeah, that, that's, exactly, that's exactly right. And, and then once we get to the brain phase, we start bringing in some fat-soluble binders that have the ability to even cross into the brain deeply, where that inorganic mercury, as an example, is stored. And uh, other toxins, I mean, biotoxins uh, from mold and uh, hidden infections, I mean, all of those can make their way into deeper tissue. But we set up that concentration to start that process of moving it, make it easier with our binding agents to get it out of the deeper tissue. Because to your point earlier, there's all these detoxes, you know, systems on the market. Number one, they use weak binders that don't have the ability to hold on 
and pull something all the way out of the body. As an example, things like Corella, very popular in our space, mm -hmm. but it's a weak binder. It doesn't mm -hmm. grab onto a heavy metal successfully to make it all the way out of the body. So it creates a redistribution. We'll talk more about it in the, uh, in the uh, process when we go through it in the 90 days. But uh, there's also, you and I had a conversation about DMSA. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about DMPS. Those are real binders that work very well, but they have to be used correctly, and most people use them incorrectly. But we'll talk about that. But in most of these products that people are using are these weak binders that don't hold on, and they create redistribution. So great analogy. I'm Mr. Analogy here. But um, I, I don't know if you have this where you live, but when I moved to Park City, Utah, um, which you're going to be out here skiing, man, soon, Hunts, right? Huntsville, not too far. You got got, I'll have to show you this, but I don't know if you can see that. But. Oh, man, that looks great. I we can't, just got I about can't three, three to snow. four days of that. <laughs> we just got about three feet of snow in the last two days, so good for you. Yes. Uh, anyway, so out here in Park City, when I moved here, I, I, I always say I don't see these things anymore, but they are the street cleaners. But, you know, here we have street cleaners. I see them all the time. So if you think about these street cleaners, every time you see these things, you see the brushes going, but you see this plume of dust around these things. Right, yeah. You see the dust resettling on the cars around you, right? You think, what are my tax dollars paying for? Do these things even work? Well, yeah. that's like these weak herbal binders that are in most of these cleanses that are on the market. They just kind of start up and move in. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is, is that a lot of that ends up deeper into our brain. So that redistribution is, is not only not effective, it's, it's actually dangerous. So, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that because this system that I created uh, over the years and have taught obviously thousands of uh, people and, and doctors, um, it really relies on using real binders correctly and using them in the right place. You know, you need a binder near the cell to make sure the toxins move from the cell all the way out of the body. And we also use a real binder in the gut that doesn't leave the gut. It acts as a catcher's net. Here's one of the reasons why. The toxins bind up to bile, and bile is utilized by the body to digest fat, but it's dumped from the liver, gallbladder, into the gut. Here's the problem. Your body's designed to reabsorb bile, and because it holds so many toxins, which we call hepatic, meaning liver, biliary uh, sludge, that's real, literally what it's called, um, it is redesigned to bring the bile back to the liver so it doesn't have to recreate it. But what does it do? It brings the toxins right around. It's called auto-intoxication. So we use a binder there to pull it away from the bile complex so you don't re, re uh, auto-intoxicate. So all of that system, y'all, we're going to learn. And it's uh, part of what real detox is. So recapping a couple myths, exercise by itself is not enough to detox the body. You were cycling like a madman and getting more and more sick. Yeah. And many of us have experienced similar scenarios. Diet is not enough to detox. Not having a perfect diet or a very, very, very clean diet like we're gonna teach you guys how to do can prevent you from getting better, but you need to really be eating clean if, if you want these other things to work. But So diet alone is not enough. And then a lot of these popular detoxification programs, the juicing, which is healthy. It has health benefits. You're getting structured water. You're getting uh, electrolytes and nutrients that your body can immediately absorb at the cellular level. But juicing cilantro and taking a bunch of chlorella is not going to get the mercury out of your brain. And it's Correct. not going to address this, this auto intoxication that Dr. Pompa has been described. And, and I don't mind a clean chlorella. If you find a great clean crop. I love it. I take it every day. No, and I have no problem with that. It, but what I want people to understand is it's, it's not going to clear the mercury out of your brain. Right. Or in, it's not going to get and clear the cell. And it doesn't hold on to heavy metal issues. So when we're purposely moving heavy metals out, you know, Corella is not the, the, you know, going to be the, the key there. And people that have severe heavy metal issues, I actually juiced cilantro. And my wife thought she was going to have to take me uh, to the emergency room, literally. Uh, I redistributed. So I was insane for more than a week um, because it redistributed so much uh, mercury. So right. uh, you, know, you have to be that. careful. Cilantro in small amounts, you know, with healthy people, no problem. But when you juice it and you have heavy metals, <laughs> that could be a challenge. But I'm, I'm all for those things. They, they just, you know, people have to understand what real detox is and that those things aren't going to get the mercury out of your brain and tissues and organs. And oftentimes 
they will make you worse, especially if they're used without these real binders. Yep. Yep. My dad had a very similar experience when we took his mercury out and um, he was staying down here with me. So it was just the two of us. And that night he woke me up at three in the morning. I heard the front door was wide open. He was getting ready to smash the window into my Jeep because for some reason he'd had a vision or a hallucination from the mercury and everything mixed up in his brain that I was dead in the Jeep and he's getting ready to try to break in. And like, that was, that was my first experience with some of what mercury can do to the brain. I'm I'm imagining you had a long week. (laughs) Yeah, uh, no no doubt. It was a bad week, you know, and, and, you know, it's, you know, I I tell my story so many times, you know, but it was, it was hard. You know, I mean, we had two young babies at the time. Uh, Matter of fact, there's five kids in that picture here. I, I have an up close one, but, um, Let's see. These these two right here were my biological. We adopted these two. I'll actually tell that story, but um, they, they were babies at the time. My wife would have to take the kids, those two, and get them out of the house because I became someone I didn't even know. The irritability. I mean, I literally, I couldn't deal, like I said, with loud noise or not even loud noise. I mean, a kid crying. I couldn't deal with it. I would literally wake up some days and say, just take the kids and go. I mean, I literally would be curled up in a ball many nights and uh, my wife would say, you know, what what do you feel like? And the only way I could describe it is a a deep feeling of dread, anxiety, and just, I feel like I wanted to cry. You know, I remember telling her that and, you know, it's like, so there's certain things that will trigger those memories even, you know, and I'm like, wow, you know, it's amazing I made it through those times. But here's the part of the other story that people don't know is, after I started getting, I was, I wasn't even quite perfect yet. Right. But I did have my life back. Um, these two, their parents tragically died. They were seven at the time. He was on the autism spectrum. You can see by that picture, this is when we just got, we can Dr. Pomp is showing a, he's showing a family photo for those of you guys that are just audio. Uh, just audio. Yeah. No, but and, we, we, we have video as well. So they may be. Yeah. Watching. Okay. So we'll, we'll speak to both of you though. I'm glad you told me that. Um, anyway, so that's Dylan and you can tell by the picture, um, that he's just not right there. He was on the autism spectrum and, um, his parents, uh, the mom was my wife's cousin and they were best friends. Uh, Matter of fact, Warren, who, you know, that's, uh, uh, my wife is Warren's cousin. So shout out out to Warren Phillips. (laughs) But here's the point I (laughs) want to make. Dr. Pompa's wife. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, my wife. But, um, anyways, uh, we, uh, we had, we inherited them, right? Their parents died. We took them on. We eventually adopted them. But I applied what I learned to get myself well to Dylan. And if you met Dylan now, today he's 22, you would never know how he had wow. that issue. You know, he has his own business. He's amazing, right? So from pain to purpose has been my life, you know, and I'm, that's why I'm so I am passionate about this topic because uh, it struck me in many areas. My wife, um, and by the way, I, I'd have to say, I mean, everyone in this picture has done cellular detox and they're all professionals. <laughs> my <laughs> wife, obviously with her lead, but my two biologicals and this third one, they all got my wife's lead. They inherited it. So in my, when I do talks, I show my wife's lead and then I show my kids off the chart. They got it all from her. They had leaky gut. They had food sensitivities, constipation. Uh, my son just told a story on my radio show. And uh, it was all because of the lead. So they're well today. But True Side Detox saved all their lives. <laughs> really, I, I can tell you, as someone that's that's had depression periodically, you know, for as long as I can remember, pretty much doing this uh, this this detox and starting to get the heavy metals out, and like really ramping it up this next month, I've, I'm already feeling big differences and shifts. Mm. And I do have periods where I probably, I probably could make a few tweaks like you and I were discussing with, uh, with the DMSA and we'll share those with all you guys that want to get in yeah, on the detox. But this, the more that we learn about this stuff, the more it seems like just about everything comes down to toxicities and deficiencies. And many of those deficiencies are because of the toxicities and much less of them are because like we're not eating enough wild caught fish or. You know, what's <laughs> funny is, and, and that's a great point because, you know, in our space in a natural health, if you will, biohacking, it's so much focus is on, you know, this particular nutrient and the superfoods and it's exciting and it's sexy, but you know, it's not how I got my life back. You know, I was already eating 
all this amazing food and doing all these amazing things because that was my life. I was a doctor who helped people, right? And the people that I'm still helping today that I coach through this. And I have, I only do it virtual now, so I have clients all over the country, you know, and it's, it's not about the, per they're already eating the perfect diet, honestly. What's mm -hmm. making people sick and not feel well and not sleep well and have the digestive issues and all the issues that people are suffering with, it's the upstream toxins. It really is. And, and my pet peeve is in why I'm coaching doctors is because everybody's doing it wrong. And I can't say everybody because obviously, you know, there's some rights that a lot of people are doing correctly, but so few, so few are doing it right. That's why my passion is teaching doctors how to do it right. And you know, through the True Cellular Detox program, teaching them how to do it right. Because that's the issue. It's the upstream toxins and hidden toxins. And we're, we're going to expand on those. I mean, areas that you won't even believe that you could be gaining these toxins uh, from, we need to look into those areas. So I'm telling you, week one, we're going to talk about that. You know, week one, we're going to identify um, week one, month one, the first talk that we have through the process. You know, you and I are going to show those things where these hidden toxins are coming from it's going to surprise you folks but what's what's you. one sneak peek like they'll get we'll get all of them in the course but for the people that are listening what's one what's one hidden source that a lot of people don't realize yeah so there's a um one of my clients right and matter of fact he just was uh texting me probably uh 30 minutes before this uh interview and um he went he was texting me about something else but this was a month or so ago he had a hidden infection in his jaw that we only identified because of something called a cone bead. He had some teeth extracted years and years ago, 20 plus years ago. This guy had chronic pain for 20 years. He had liver pain every day for 20 years in debilitating body pain. Just this guy eats perfect. I mean, he lives a perfect lifestyle. He texted me on the way out of the dentist after he got this infection out. And he said, Dan, is it possible that my liver pain will completely stay away? Because this is the first time I haven't had it ever. And it's been over a month and he has no liver pain. 20 years in 85%, this is directly his quote, 85% of his systemic body pain that he was suffering with and tried everything was already gone. And he was, you know, leaving the dentist's office. <laughs> so, you know, these hidden infections, are surprising you're going to learn about other areas and you know where they can be but hidden infections is a big big hidden source i was on the phone this morning with one of my clients she's a young girl in her teens and healthy if you will and she was living in a home with her parents and it was in, exposed to mold and um she had debilitating put her down headaches they did every mri cat scan you name it and this poor girl suffered. And it wasn't until we discovered there was a hidden mold source uh, that was, and she also had a hidden infection. She had a wisdom tooth that was impacted and it was up under that wisdom tooth. So two hidden sources, and she had been to many, many, many different doctors. So anyways, we're gonna, we're gonna uncover more of those, but there's just a couple. Yeah. What, what was the diagnostic tool that you used to identify the hidden infection? You said cones? C-O-N-E-B-E-A-M. And do most biological dentists know about the cone beam? They're too expensive. They typically have to refer out for a cone beam and then they need the correct software to see it because you don't see these infections on plain film. You have to have a special, um, and th these cone beams are relatively new. Um, it's really made this area, um, there was dentists who said, oh, cavitations, uh, you know, they don't exist. Uh, now with cone beam, they can't make that argument anymore. Oh, uh, exciting. And is this something that we can get into in, in the course a little bit? Or we're going different? to. Yeah, we'll we're going to? All right, nice. Love it. Listen, I'll, I'll get into it wherever you want me to get into for your- I'm, for I'm your fascinated career. by that. I mean, as a guy that, that broke his jaw playing baseball growing up, I've always wondered if there, was, if there was something perhaps under the surface. I've had moments of doing nasal rinses where I felt things in my jaw that would but indicate- Why don't we do this for the show? Yeah. Why don't you get a cone beam? Get a dentist to refer you to a cone beam. Okay. Um, he doesn't have the software. I can have uh, one of our dentists read it. He'll go over it with you with, for, with, on Skype. But, um, what, and then we can look at your cone beam. And it'll be very educational for people because I'm a believer. 
that's the way you educate. It, it's a life changer. So it, if you do that, we can really educate people. With I'm that. in. All right, guys, you're hearing me now committing to the cone beam. Yeah. Um, beautiful. And then the last bit. So prep body. Then what do we do in the brain now? The now brain. This is the so most- now we bring in fat solubles and we'll share all that with you during the thing. And the idea is, is to move this stuff from the deeper tissues. Um, and then that's when we start pulsing week on week off, you know, and there's a reason for that. We're going to, again, you, you know, we'll give you the reason later, but the, the bottom line is then we start the brain phase and that's the most critical phase. And we'll talk about how, you know, if you need more, you know, um, if you want to do more, we'll, we'll talk about all that, you know, how to know if you're done, we'll talk about testing, you know, we'll, we'll get into that during the, uh, the, the, the webinars that we're doing for the program. All right. Fantastic. So for those of you guys that are listening and you're realizing that we need more than just diet and exercise and cilantro and chlorella to get this stuff out of our body, you want to join Dr. Pompa and I on the TCD challenge. You can go to tcdbiohack.com, tcdbiohack, singular.com. And I don't know how many spots exactly we have, but it's not a tremendous amount and we're hooking up a pretty exciting discount. We're going to also include everything that I'm personally doing alongside the, the TCD challenge, including DMSA and, and Dr. Pomp is going to talk about DMPS and ETDA, which just sound like a bunch of acronyms, but they're also a great way to get these toxins out of, out of your vital organs and, and the things that you use to think clearly. So all of that is going to be included. If you guys would like to join us, go to tcdbiohack.com. And Dr. Pampa, if, if you have uh, two minutes for ra- some rapid fire questions, uh, I would love to do that. Let's do it. All right, cool. So right before the rapid fire round, guys, let's check out a couple messages from this show's sponsors. And we're back for the rapid fire round with Dr. Dan Pompa. You ready? I'm ready. Beautiful. What movie, book, or podcast has changed your life? Oh, gosh. I didn't realize it was personal stuff. Okay, this is really fun. Um, (laughs) Hey, I'm a a Christian, so the Bible's changed my life more than any, right? So if I didn't say that, boy, I'd be a mess. (laughs) I'm going to hell. (laughs) I just just started going to church again consistently and and have been loving it. I was just, my spiritual practice was lacking. I'll tell my whole story on that. And believe me, I had, listen, I... I'm acceptance to whatever anyone believes. I am who I am. And, you know, but anyways, it's, it's, it'll be fun to talk about. Go ahead. This nice. is rapid fire. Love it. What's your definition of healthy? You know, I'm going to use a big word. It's called homeostasis. When the body, it means balance. When the body is in this perfect state of balance, we all have bad cells. When a body is in balance, it gets rid of them. So homeostasis, when you go outside of homeostasis, that's where dis-ease happens, disease. So it is homeostasis. Very good. How does Dr. Dan Pompa get motivated? Mm, I get motivated when I uh, get on my bike out in these mountains, man, or, you know, get out in the, out in the woods, man. It does. It motivates me. So uh, I, have to, I have to spend a certain amount of time outside, you know, and also um, a problem, something unfixable, unsolvable motivates the heck out of me. I dig deep and I research the heck out of things. So that's motivating for me too. Nice. What have you eaten today? Uh, right now, nothing. Um, really? It's right. four thirty my time and I've yet to eat a bite of food because I'm today's one of my fasting days. So I'll eat one meal today. <laughs> Guys, I don't do whole, it every day. This whole interview has been fast. brought to you fasted. <laughs> <laughs> fasted. So I ate water today and some air. <laughs> Delicious. What's your favorite supplement? Ah, uh, my favorite supplement. Oh, gosh. You know, that, <laughs> one of my favorite supplements, I, I, I have two. Cytodetox, because that's what moves the, uh, the stuff from the cell. But that I love that new formulation, that, too. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's been, you know, advanced over the years. Bind um, is that gut binder I talked about. I, I wouldn't, uh, oh, man, I, 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 I love that product. I'll just keep it there. All right, nice. I, I, so I, I've got all of this stuff next to me. We've got the brain phase, we've got the body phase, all of these guys. For those of you that are on video, like this is a bit, there, I mean, there's just a tremendous amount of value. I've got a, a, a huge box of, of the TCD detox next to me. So like, you're going to want to get in on this. It's going to be so much fun. And, and 
I mean, the information alone is worth it, but it's coming with everything that you need to get this stuff out of your cells. And uh, yeah, I mean, the educational portals are worth every penny of it. I, I, you know, I, I think that the price that you all are charging, and, and I don't even get involved in that, but um, it literally, I mean, when you put the product in there, it's not much over the price of the product. So um, I'm, I'm sure people will appreciate that because you get the whole 90 days. So. What's one thing besides your phone and your computer that you can't live without, like a product? Yeah, gosh, I wish I could live without this phone. I, I hate <laughs> those phones. I do. I, I can't wait for the day that I don't need it. Um, yeah, so what, what I can't I live without? My bike. I can't live without okay, my bike. Good answer. I need to be in the mountains, man. <laughs> it's like, it's, I, I, I take my car. Just please. Keep, don't take <laughs> I love it. Uh, last two. What blood test or labs do you get yourself and recommend most often to clients? Uh, you know, here, here's ones that your doctor typically won't run. CRP, it shows systemic inflammation. HGBA1C, so often just called A1C. It looks at your three or four months worth of glucose, which is a major inflammation driver. Uh, and yet doctors rarely run it. And another one is called an N, like Nancy M, like Mary, um, R, NMR test, uh, which LabCorp does it, but it's a, a particle size and number of cholesterol. Doctors are running regular cholesterol. It means nothing, but the particle number and size does. So, you know, that's another uh, test um, that is frequently missed. So, you know, just running, um, you know, those tests uh, is very critical. And then there's another one uh, that we're going to talk about during the 90 days, and it's called a visual contrast sensitivity test. Um, and I'm going to leave you hang on that one of why that's important to get is a first um, view of whether you're neurotoxic or not. There's a tremendous amount of overlap between toxic overload and the symptomology of Lyme and co-infections. Yes, there is. And we're going to talk about that because um, when we talk about hidden infections, Lyme is one that we're going to bust a lot of myths with. Um, and you're going to learn a lot there because many people are uh, infected. And so we need to talk about that. Agreed. Last question. What's the first hour of your day look like? Uh, my wife and I spend it in prayer. Um, and right now we're doing a Bible study together. But we start every day in prayer, praying for our kids, praying for, you know, our doctors, our clients, our mission, I mean, everything, our health, um, giving thanks. We start every day like that, every day. I love it. And then I typically go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, Dr. Pampa, this has been a ton of fun. I can't wait for February 18th and the True Cellular Detox Challenge. Guys, if you're listening and you want to get in on it with Dr. Pomp and I, tcdbiohack.com. We're going to put it in the show notes. We've got a discount built in there for you so that it's like basically the cost of the supplements and you're getting access to the portal. And I'm going to share everything that, that I'm doing as well. So you guys are getting, you're getting the full shebang. Nothing is hidden or held back. And the end result is what are they going to feel 90 days from, from February 18th? Well, you're going to change. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be a new you. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. Well, um, Dr. Pompa, for, for those that want to stay up to date with projects you're working on outside of the, the tcdbiohack.com website, where can they follow you, your projects? Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah drpompa.com. So dr like doctor, dr, and then my last name, p-o-m-p-a.com. Uh, I do cellular healing TV and uh, you can uh, tune into all that. But absolutely, man. Thank you so much for hanging out, Dr. Pompa. It's been a pleasure. I can't wait for the next couple of weeks. I'll say hi. Well, I'm sure you see Warren more than I do, but I'm excited to hang out with Warren tomorrow and uh, dive into the detox. Thanks I, again for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely.